How are you, everyone? Last week we talked about, in Arabic, about how to protect uh, your country. Today, we'll talk about how to protect our country to the English-speaking audience. Our country is made out, what's our country? Our country is made out of cluster, clusters of complicated, interconnected, diverse, highly structured components. Clusters of complicated, interconnected, diverse, highly structured components. Each one of them is serving one another. Each component, simple or complicated, is serving one another. And if one or a few are lacking, that means there will be some gap inside the society which we need to fill it. That's why we should not undermine the role played by any small group living in our society and in our country. But each group, and each one of us, has a role to play in building and protecting our country, our society, our nation. Those components, some of them are theological, moral, and value-based. Theological, moral, and value-based. Others are historical, cultural, linguistics. Others, ethnic, racial, genetical, human components. Other, natural resources, climate, ge geological component. Other, civilized, ancient, historical component. Other, civil society, development component. Other, which is social, economical, military, and security components, and other components. So all these complex components are building the country and building the state inside the country. Also, my country, where I love, my family, my neighborhood, the achievement of the great role models who live in my country, my country is my dream for the current situation bent on what my ancestors have achieved to create the better future for the generation to come. This is how I look or how we should look at the country. The country is a complex of emotions, mm. of love and care. Mm love and care and mercy to every creation that's living in my country. The country is not only a solid, rigid, structured component, but it's human. It is human element, social element, and moral value-based element which cement all those complicated, interconnected, diverse, highly structured component. Without such a cement of love, value, ethical, theological components, we cannot put all these structures together. Second slide. The other one. This one? No, no, the last one. Okay. If we look at the country here, look at like zoom in mm. or zoom out, either from the citizen to the country or from the country to the citizen. Zoom in, country level, district level, city level. Town level, village level, area level, street level, 
Avenue, level, house, level, flat, level, family level, and citizen level. If we zoom out, we start from the citizen. This is a simplistic way of looking at my country and your country. Okay? If we zoom in, we'll go to the individual, citizen. If we zoom out, we'll go to the greater border of my country. The message here, don't ever let anybody to divide your country. Don't ever let anybody to reduce your country to a district level, to a city level, to a town level, to a village level, to an area level, to a street level, to an avenue level, to house level, to flat level, to family level, to citizen. Never, never ever let anybody or any power to reduce your country into smaller area, smaller component, smaller cluster of people. Our role is to zoom out and from within the citizenship of every citizen, we can build the greater nation and country that we are living in. But do not allow, I'm saying it again, do not ever allow anyone to reduce your country into a smaller cluster of people, a smaller areas, a smaller avenues, or to streets. But let every and each citizen to come together and build from within the citizenship of the individual into the greater border of the country. This is the first message for all of us, because nowadays what we see in different areas with the inner conflict, military conflict, what they call it civil war between different groups, those who hate your country try to reduce it from the country level into the cluster of people, not even family level. Because family will be dispersed, fragmented, divided, and lost in the crowd. And they will be changed into clusters of people living together. To start again, the message is prevent and stand firm against anyone who would like to reduce your country, our country, into a smaller spaces for smaller group of people. Next. How to do that? This is the second message. We volunteer to protect our country. What does it mean? We volunteer to protect our country. What does it mean? We volunteer to protect our country. The bedrock of building the infrastructure of a country or of a civil society is volunteerism. Volunteerism is the bedrock, is the foundation, is the pillar of building the greater state. And most of the great states on earth are based on this foundation. The foundation of volunteerism. Self-serving, voluntarily serving their own countries. Why? Because volunteerism build the spirit inside the hearts and the mind of the citizens of such country, of such society, of such area. Through volunteerism, you can build the spirit. Such a spirit will produce a very positive dynamic energy inside me and inside you. Such a positive dynamic 
energy will let me will enable me to develop myself develop my neighborhood and start to act positively to build the infrastructure of my own neighborhood and my own society so volunteerism releases the spirit of the individual which creates such a positive dynamic energy around him or her to share his character such an energy will be like an element of building the character of such individual an element of increasing the loyalty of such individual an element of increasing the love of such individual to his or her society to his or her country to his or his family and so on so on so on so so this positive energy will build a loving and the caring character which cares for every one in the neighborhood with everyone in the country as well what this will lead to this will lead to such an individual to start taking initiative and the second message here after volunteerism each and every one of us must have his or her own initiative even if this is on a very small scale on a very simple scale don't live don't stay don't exist without having an initiative whether this initiative is small or big but i my advice is to start with a very simple small initiative volunteerism is the spirit create positive energy to build my character then i start to be confident to have my own individual initiative once i start as an individual to have an initiative this will be seen by some of my friends some of my neighbors so who will be able to group around me and to sit down and look at my initiatives and my initiative and through that they can give me the group directive so the group around me after starting the initiatives will try to shape the direction of such initiative So volunteerism, leading the spirit, creating positive energy to build my character, to take individual initiative, to make an individual initiatives, and to attract a group of people to start to help me in directing my initiatives. All this, in the very simplistic way, will become a community project based on. this five or six steps community project based on this five or six steps next slide no okay we have to try the community project on a smaller scale as well not on a big scale don't ever start big Don't ever start big. Never start big. You can start small, but think big. You can start local, you can act local and think global. While you look at the mountain and you look at the mountain as a comp- as made of many components of small particles. Desert is made out of I don't know how many billion or trillions or whatever it is of numbers of the sand particles. So always in the initiative and in the project community project start small with an achievable objective that you can measure simply and measure its impact and its effect on your community. We cannot change the whole world in 24 hours. We cannot change the climate in a year or two. We cannot grow from infanthood to adulthood in six months. 
and we cannot grow from primary, elementary, kindergarten education into university in a year or two. Every process has a natural growth. So your community project, our community project must take its time and must start small and simple. Because if you overdoing something, you might put some objectives which are not achievable. Such a project, community project, will lead to what? To community development. Because if a few groups, each one of them, start to have their own simple project in different parts of the community, that means that we are building community based on individual initiatives, group directives, simple community project to start building uh, the community. So the community building will be based on this. Goes naturally, simply, and uh, simply actually to go to community building. It's the foundation of community building. This foundation of community building is going to lead to what? Going to lead to what we call it informal civil society. We are all civilian, we are all living together, we are all having the spirit of volunteerism, positive energy, we are all having to shape our character, have the smaller projects, start building the community to do what we call an informal civil society. This is the natural growth. It's going, growing, growing, growing to make this kind of informal civil society which would be shaping itself later on. So the process of development of a community starts from the individual volunteer to the community building, to the cohesion between community projects, to the collectives of the, direct, the group directives of the different groups who are actually trying to capture all the individual initiatives and to make it community projects. Your simple work and very simple project will lead to community building and informal civil society that start to shape the shape of the society which later on become a nation and the country and the state. This informal society, civil society, will have clusters, several clusters, several clusters, okay, not very well developed, and community, different ones. It will, you will start to see in your own country these several clusters and communities. They might not be connected yet, but each group of them, each cluster or community, is trying to understand how to exist together, how to work together, how to connect together, how to develop their site together, how to achieve their goals and the objectives together, then how to bridge between each cluster and each community to start to connect and make the greater society and the greater community we have. So the informal civil society will have these clusters, uh, several clusters and communities inside it. Once we reach this stage, if we look at, if we look at actually the age or the time span between the individual volunteers to the community cluster, this we talk about years. Or not, we're not talking about months or week or days, we're talking about years of hard work to go from the individual, even the individual initiative, to the several clusters and communities. Years of difficult and hard work, years of giving in your achievement to your fellow citizen, to your nation, to your country, to your society, to your community. 
If each one of us will personalize his or her achievement, you will never go out from the individual initiatives into several clusters and communities. Never. Because you always look at yourself, not at the community. You always look at yourself, not at the society. You always look at yourself, not at the neighborhood. That's why you will never go out. If you do that, you will never go out from the individual initiatives, which you might not develop to become group directive and community project. So I'm talking about this process here. Then we make the communities and civil cluster. It will take years, five years, 10 years, 15 years, as much as it takes, because it's a natural growth of a community tree from the seed, which is the individual, to the community, which is the fruitful trees and the jungle later on. Several clusters and community. Then the communities together will start to look at themselves and structure themselves. Hierarchy, vertically and horizontally. So it will go here to have the structure civil. I'm keeping talking about several communities because the citizens who are the people who are building such communities. The military and security are those people who are protecting the community. Okay, so the structure, this will go to that. After these clusters, this will be the structure. Several communities will be clear for all of us to see it clearly in different parts of the country. Then the shape of the civil society will be clear for us. The clear shape of civil society will come after how many stages? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve stages. Not twelve years, more than that. When you build a nation, when you build a country, when you build a society, when you build a community, when you build a neighborhood, when you plant a tree, it takes years. It takes years of hard work. If you want to change the tree into a jungle and forest, it takes hundreds of years. To become a habitat where all the creations of God can live inside it, while wild beasts, birds, other domestic animals, insects, reptiles, extra, extra, living it. So from one seed or few seeds in a fertile land to a jungle which look like the forest. Look about the Amazon and the jungle in the Bay of Bengal in India. It took hundreds and hundreds of years or more than that to have this forest there. But here, if we are going to reach the shape of the civil society, it will take years. If we are living in a state of peace, and if the military and the security are protecting the process of building the civil society of the country. Once you have the shape, the formal shape of the civil society as a whole, from there, you will start to classify and to organize and to uh, structure the components of civil society organization, which each one of them is specializing in a subject. Children's rights, women's rights, agriculture, water, uh, treatment of the sick, orphans, uh, and a lot of things. Everything you can imagine in the society will have an organization trying to respond to the needs of the citizen in such society. So the civil society organization will be there to look at every component and every gap in the society and try to address the needs of every individual citizen 
and the dream of every individual citizen and try to achieve it and help the government and help the, what we call it nowadays, the private sector. So the civil society organizations, which we'll talk about them here, will be one of three or four components that are building the country together with the government, together with the private sector, and together with the academia, and I'm always saying academia, especially in the Arab and Middle Eastern countries and Muslim-led countries, because of the weakness of the research-based program and the think tank in this area. So in the West, you might actually see three partners, which is civil society organization, government, and private sector, but in Middle East, North Africa, Africa, and uh, Muslim populated country, Muslim majority country, I have to add the academia and the think tank to it to make them four components. Now, we're looking at the whole nation, خلاص. We have, we have a nation, we have a country, we build afterwards the, the state institution. State institution here, okay, must be completely independent from any government. Must be completely independent from any government. And the guarantor of its independence is the strength of the civil society organization and the civil society sector who will protect the state and institution from being hijacked by any political group or any religious group or any group that would love to, to, to run the country and control the state and institution. So the state and institution guarantor for its independence is the strength of the civil society sector and the civil society organizations and their uh, uh, diverse activity to respond to the needs of every individual citizens and to complement the role of the private sector and the role of the government in building and maintaining the sustainable development of any country. So if we look back at all this, I've been discussing over the last half an hour or more actually if we want to protect our country we must release the spirit of volunteerism uh, to the hearts and the minds and the vision of every citizen in the country of every citizen in the country of every citizen in the country no matter who is he or who is she? No matter of the, his education, or education, intellectual capability, or incapability, but every one of us will have a role to build and protect our country. We should never undermine small the role of a small group, the small the role of the small and the uneducated individuals and we never marginalize them and put them away from the scene of building our society, protecting our country and raising the flag of our nation. Because each and every one of us in the country have aspiration to raise the flagship of his or her own country. Very proud to talk about his or her country, talk about the past, the present, and the future, talk about the treasure of the country, the heritage, the civilized achievement of the fathers and mothers and ancestors, and all these, the theology, the value, the moral values, the manner, the climate and everything in the country. So the guarantor of protecting our country is volunteerism. Whoever prevent volunteerism, stop volunteerism, fight volunteerism, 
is fight the spirit of building and protecting his or her own country. It's changing the country into a military camp, which is controlling a group of prisoners, which is wrong. Citizens are not president, are not president, but not prisoners in their own country. Citizens are the owners of their own country. Citizens are the leaders of their own countries. Citizens are the protectors of their own countries. Citizens are the builder of their own country and civilization. Citizens are those people who live and die to develop, to protect their own country and to build their civilization. From citizens who have, can have the military personality, then we have the security personality, then we have the academia, then we have the professors, then we have the doctors, the, every individual profession in the country. When we respect, empower, and trust every citizen of the country. The solution for most of the problem which I was watching in different countries, especially in uh, the Arab world, is based or could be based on how much we respect the citizen, how much we empower the citizen, how much we give freedom to the citizen to express their views and their values, how much, how much we respect their culture, their tradition, their religion, values, and how much we allow them naturally to develop their communities, naturally to develop their country, naturally to protect their country. If this is clear uh, for us now, I think I come back and say to conclude and say that our country, what I said at the very beginning, our country is made out of clusters of complicated, interconnected, diverse, highly structured components. But each one of them is serving one another to have this harmony harmonious function between each and every component in the site. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.